right, in this video, we're going to be doing an individual integral. It is going to be just a basic u substitution integral, one which would be found in a Calc 1 class. So um, we're going to start by letting u be the inside part of that denominator. That denominator is a cosine x raised to the fourth power. The raised to the fourth power is the outside function. The cosine x is the inside function. So I'm going to let u be cosine x. I'm going to take the derivative of both sides, so we'll have a du is equal to a negative sine x dx. I'm going to go ahead and solve all the way down for that dx. So then we'll have a du over a negative sine x is equal to that dx. All right, at that point, then we're going to come down here and we're going to start substituting um, into our integral here. So I'll have the integral. I'm going to have that sine x remain on top. On the bottom here, I'm going to, since cosine is u, we're going to have a u to the fourth power. And then we're going to go ahead and change that dx for what it equals. We'll have a du over a negative sine x. That's going to allow us to cross out those sine x's. All right, and then the number one thing here, got to remember that that negative sign right there, it's going to make it easier if we bring it out in front. So then we're going to have a negative integral 1 over u to the fourth du. Now we want to make this so that we can integrate this. So we're going to have a negative integral using laws of exponents, a u to the negative 4 du. We now can integrate this. We're going to probably use a square bracket. All right, I'm going to have that in a negative sign there out in front to clearly indicate what's going to happen here. We're going to add one to that uh, negative 4, so we'll have a u to the negative 3. In front, then, we're going to have a negative 1 third. So a negative times negative here is going to be a positive. All right, then we'll have our plus c. So this is going to turn into a positive. All right, I'm going to go ahead and substitute cosine back in for my u. And at the same time, I think I'm going to go ahead and move that back down, make it positive. All right, so then we'll have the positive 1 third, all right, times moving this to the bottom and substituting cosine in, I'm going to have a 1 over a cosine to the third x plus c, all right? And then probably, I mean, there would be nothing wrong with that. I mean, take the dot out, there would be nothing wrong with that. But that right there, if we remember our reciprocal identities, that is going to be a secant cubed, all right? So it might be a little nicer uh, answer if we had a 1 third secant x cubed and then plus C. So pretty much a straightforward U substitution. Uh, I'm going to highlight the one. I'm going to highlight the zero because we need to emphasize these are limits of integration. Limits of integration for X. Big deal. Very, very important concept to conceptually understand. This is all written in terms of x. I got a dx going on here. All right, these are limits of in integration for x. Okay, now if we're doing u substitution, eventually I end up writing somewhere over here an integral in terms of u. So I'm no longer in terms of x. I have to get rid of those two numbers right now as we are beginning to learn this when I'm using my u equation because they are not the same okay so we're going to do just like we always have when we initially start here okay we're going to say okay we're going to let all right so where's the inside most part of the function the x squared plus one so that's where we want to go for our u all right and then we have i haven't really said much about it today but then in your head when you take the derivative of x squared you get 2x which means that x is going to go away, so it's a good thing. Okay, so we're on the right track. All right, we're going to go a du is equal to a 2x, and then a dx. We'll solve all the way down for dx. So we'll have a du over a 2x. Okay, then we always come up here and we start doing our substitutions. All right, this is crucial. I'm going to have an integral. I am not going to put anything here and I am not going to put anything there because the zero and one 
can only be used when I have all X's. And what, I, what am I about ready to do? I'm about ready to mix up my X's and U's. I'm going to leave this X. I'm going to replace this with my U. And I'm going to replace this with a DU over 2X. Okay, so at this point, I have a jumbled mess. I don't have an equation in terms of anything, really. I'm just doing some work here. I've got U's, I've got X's, but you cannot put your limits of integration for X here because you don't have an entire equation written in terms of X. Okay, so very, very important thing. Okay, now we're going to cross out our X's. And then what are we going to pull out in front? Yep, we're going to pull out that one half out in front. Okay, so we're going to pull the one half out in front. And then I'll have a u to the third du. Now I am 100% in terms of u. All right, so right now, since we are at the beginning, we're not going to have any numbers at the top and bottom. No numbers. Do not write the zero and one there. A little bit later, I will show you how to change limits of integration for x and change them to limits of integration for u and we will put different numbers here okay but right here at the beginning let's just learn okay we got to take rid of we got to get rid of them because they're limits of integration for x okay so we're going to integrate like normal okay let's see uh we'll have the one half sitting out in front um let's see add one to the exponent i'll have a u to the fourth that'll give me a one fourth in front Okay, and then I, I usually go ahead and put my plus C there because I'm doing an indefinite integral at that point. Okay, now when I go back in terms of X, I am going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to take that one half and that one fourth and go ahead and multiply it. All right, so I'm going to multiply one eighth and then I'm going to substitute my U back in. So an X squared plus a one to the fourth power. Okay, now. Am I all in terms of X? So can I now evaluate based on my limits of integration for X? So I can legally now at this point put back in the zero and the one because those are limits of integration for X and I'm finally back in to a form that is just X. Okay. Let's plug some things in. Oh, this is going to be kind of easy. I plug in one. One squared is one, plus one more is two, two to the fourth. Two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. Okay, and then 16 over eight is two. All right, then we're going to subtract. We're going to plug in our zero. Okay, so zero squared plus one is one to the fourth. Still one times one eighth, so one eighth. So 15 eighths, because that'd be 16 over 8. So 15 over 8. I mean, without a calculator, we don't need to go to a decimal. 15 over 8, because this would be 16 over 8. Okay, so the whole emphasis of that was I really, and, and like, so what am I going to do? I will, obviously, you're going to write this. I'm going to check this right here. I will look for your mess that's got both X's and U's. And I'm going to look and make sure you don't have numbers there. If you've got numbers there, I'm going to probably take a point off right there. When you get all in terms of U, again, I'm going to look specifically here. Do you not have any? Because you're not supposed to. You'll probably get a point for this line. Going from here to here, you'll get a point because I'm checking the integration at that point. And then when you plug it back in, then I'm going to look to see, did you put back in the 0 and 1 because you're in terms of X? And then final answer. Okay. All right. But like I said, this, I mean, it works. Works perfectly, all right? I just know that, you know, like at some universities like Purdue and stuff, when my children were going through there, they were really picky about those limits of integration for X. Couldn't be here, okay? So I want to emphasize that. Now, there is some merit to changing the limits of integration to limits of integration for U because if I change these two numbers here, then as soon as I integrate, this expression is sometimes easier to evaluate than this, so it makes the work a little bit easier. It makes the arithmetic a little bit easier when you have limits of integration for u, because isn't a, you know even a one eighth u to the fourth more simple than an x squared plus one to the fourth? 
See, so it will be to our advantage, all right? But I want to practice this for a while. In this video, I'm going to take a look at an individual integral. Now, it's going to be a straightforward integral from um, a Calc 1 class. So we'll implement some properties and then go ahead and do the integration, all right? I've got uh, two things that I am adding right here. So I can break this up into two individual integrals using properties that I know. So integral of 2 over x dx and then plus the integral of e to the x dx. Okay, now some people might say that's an extra step, but it is just, you know, for that beginning calc student, letting them know that, yeah, you can look at these individually, you know, as a sum. All right, now we've got a constant here on top that we could pull out to make this a little bit easier. So we'll pull out that two, and then we'll have an integral of a one over x dx. All right, now um, I think I'm going to go ahead and in this step, go ahead and integrate that because we know that, or hopefully you have memorized that the integral of e to the x is an e to the x. All right, I will have a plus c here and eventually. Um, on this next step, we'll do the integral of 1 over x. That one you just have to have memorized as natural log absolute value of x. I'll have the 2 out in front. So 2 natural log absolute value of x plus the e to the x right there. And then since this is an indefinite integral, we want to make sure and add that plus c. So a really straightforward integral. In this video, we're going to take a look at a definite integral. Um, it is going to be just a basic u substitution integral, um, ultimately with a natural log in there, but one that would be typically found in a Calc 1 class. All right, so if I'm going to start this um, with a basic u substitution, I'm going to let my u be that entire denominator of x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> take the derivative of both sides, so I'll have a du is equal to a dx, 1 dx. All right, so then that's all I have to do at that point. Then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to rewrite this so that I'm in terms of u. Okay, so I'm going to have the integral. I'm going to leave off the negative 1 and the negative 9 because those are limits of integration for x since this is all written in terms of x. But I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to have a 1 on top here. I'm going to substitute my u for that x minus 1 and then substitute dx for du. I am now with an integral in terms of u, so I do not want to put the negative 1 and the negative 9 on there since those are limits of integration for x. All right, now once I am here, hopefully at this point you have um, the integral of 1 over u memorized. That's just going to be the natural log, absolute value of u plus c. Okay, now I want to get back in terms of x so that I can evaluate this integral. Okay, so I'm going to put the x uh, minus 1 back in for u. So I'll have natural log absolute value x minus 1. All right, now I'm back in terms of x here. So then I can say, okay, I'm going to reintroduce my limits of integration for x. Put those on there so that I can evaluate this. All right, plugging in a negative 1 here, negative 1 minus 1 will give me a negative 2. So I'm going to have natural log, absolute value of a negative 2, and then minus, I'm going to plug in that negative 9. When I plug in negative 9, negative 9 minus 1 is going to give me a negative 10. So natural log, absolute value of negative 10. All right, taking the absolute values of both of those, then we'll have the natural log of a 2 minus the natural log of a 10. Okay, and if you don't have a calculator, um, we can just go ahead and leave it like that. You could use a calculator, decimal approximation. Um, you're probably just going to have to follow the directions on your um, exam, test, homework, whatever it is, to find out exactly what form they want it in. Your decimal approximation is a negative 1.609. All right, so basically just a uh, pretty straightforward U substitution definite integral. All right, but again, the main emphasis here has to be on the fact that these are limits of integration for x because I'm 1 over x minus 1 dx. Everything's in terms of x. So when I'm in my, you know, equations in terms of u, which is right here, I definitely do not want to include those you know, the negative 1 and the negative 9 because those are limits of integration for x. Once I get the equation back in terms of x, then I can reintroduce those. All right, um, a little bit later on, 
um, farther on into a calculus class, then they would show you how to change those limits of integration, all right? Because changing the limits of integration from limits of integration from x to u does make the problem a little bit simpler, but this one was a short enough and easy enough problem we didn't need to worry about that. All right, in this video, we're going to work out an individual integral. It is going to be a basic u substitution integral, one that would be found pretty early in a Calc 1 class. So we're going to start by letting our u be the exponent right here on the e. So we're going to say u is equal to x squared. I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. I'll have a du is equal to a 2x dx. I want to go ahead and solve all the way down for dx. So I'll have a du over the 2x is equal to my dx. That's going to set me up there then to come back up to my original equation and start substituting. Um, first thing I think I'm going to do is take that 3 and pull it out in front. It is a constant. We might as well get that out. Okay, then we'll have the integral. Then the x is still going to be there. I'm going to have the e, but instead of having x squared, I will replace that with my u. And then I will replace that dx with everything that that equals, which is a du over a 2x. All right, now that's going to allow me to cross out the x's, all right, and bring out the 2. Now, I already have a 3 out there, so when I rewrite on the next line, I'll have a 3 over 2 out in front. We'll have the integral of an e to the u du. All right, hopefully at this point you know that the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So I will have a 3 halves e to the u. We can go ahead and do a plus c on there because we've finished our integration. Last step will be to replace u with what it equals. So then I'll have a 3 halves e to the x squared plus c. So definitely just a straightforward U substitution integral definitely found in that beginning Calc 1 class. Definitely.